The first time I walked the labyrinth was only a couple of years ago at the Grace Cathedral in San Francisco. And before I actually saw one, I think I assumed that a labyrinth would be like a maze. But a maze is actually a very different thing to a labyrinth. A maze is, uh, has several different pathways and lots of dead ends, and it's specifically designed to frustrate and confuse and quite literally amaze you, which is where we get the word from. Labyrinth, on the other hand, has only a single pathway and there are no dead ends, so you can't get lost. It's just a simple contemplative pathway. A maze is an intellectual exercise and a labyrinth is a spiritual one. So anyway, I walked this labyrinth of the Grace Cathedral and I walked it and I walked it and I came back the next day and I walked it some more and I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with the whole idea of walking meditation and the labyrinth as a tool for spiritual practice. And for those of you who find traditional sitting meditation a bit challenging, walking the labyrinth is a really easy way into that same meditative space. It's an easy way to synchronize and align things. Since then I've walked labyrinths uh, all over the United States and in Europe and in particular in France at the Chartres Cathedral which is where I did my facilitator training. The labyrinth of the Chartres Cathedral was built in the early 13th century and at that time it was used as an alternate form of pilgrimage because during the Crusades the trip to Jerusalem was a bit dangerous and so Christian pilgrims would make their way to one of the six cathedrals across France which at that time all had labyrinths in them. Now the labyrinth doesn't belong to the Christians alone. It actually predates Christianity by quite some time. There are Neolithic petroglyphs which show the ancient version of the labyrinth uh, in Tunisia and in Spain. Uh, the ancient Romans had labyrinth mosaic floors and there are examples of pottery from Rome from the 7th century BC which show that ancient design. The Greeks used labyrinths in their currency. There are coins from the 3rd century BC from Knossos in Crete which show the labyrinth imprinted on one side of the coin. Uh, the Scandinavians built uh, rock or stone labyrinths on coastal headlands. In the United Kingdom and in Germany they made turf labyrinths which were usually located on the village common or the village green. There are ancient examples in China and India and in North and South America. The use of the labyrinth fell out of favour in the Western world sometime around the end of the 17th century and it coincided with the cultural shift in emphasis towards more rational, linear thinking. It was also at this time that hedge mazes began to be introduced in kitchen gardens. So the labyrinth has really lain dormant for the last 300 years, but there's been a revival. In the last 15 years, more than 200 labyrinths have been built in the United States in hospitals alone. There are hundreds of others that have been built in universities and public parks and schools and people even take canvas labyrinths into prisons. So this long forgotten mystical tradition is being reborn. And it's being reborn in Sydney where the Board of Trustees of Centennial Park have had the vision to approve a proposal to build a sandstone labyrinth in Centennial Park. And we're hoping that you will help us raise the money to build it.